Hi, I'm Gene, and welcome to Assess Minutes, where we take a complex assessment topic and break it down to make it easily understandable, because minutes matter. Just about everybody knows that old saying about comparing apples and oranges. Well, I actually read an author the other day that took a different take with that, and that particular author said, what are you talking about? When you say comparing apples and oranges, usually people are focusing on the differences. But you know, apples and oranges actually have a lot in common. They're, they're both fruits. They both grow on trees and they both have seeds in them and we could go on and on. And we're gonna use this comparison or this metaphor of apples and oranges today as we discussed comparing different types of scores from any given assessment. Because the reality of it is most of us don't have degrees in statistics as, as educators. I know I had some training as assessment uh, prior to service, but not all that much. A degree in statistics or a degree in psychometrics would give us a whole lot more insight. And those of us that are lay people to educational measurement, sometimes we have some unrealistic expectations about how different types of a scores are going to line up in any given assessment. So let's dive into our metaphor here. We're going to use the apple to stand for criterion referenced scores. Those types of scores that say, did the kid actually meet the level of expectation presented in the standards? We'll use the orange to represent how kids actually do. Those would be our normed reference scores. Things like percentile ranks that say, how did the student you're interested in do in relation to the performance of kids overall? So this one is, what do the standards expect of our children? And this one is, how do our children actually do? And if we think about it, we can very quickly realize that sometimes these two things won't line up. We know that in the current educational reform dialogue, there's been a lot of discussion about raising the level of expectations. What the standards will expect of our children has gone up. And as a result, when we then compare it to how our kids are doing, what we'll find is they may not line up precisely. Now, let's be clear. Kids that are really top ranges, kids that are doing really well normatively, are almost always going to be mastering all the standards for you. And conversely, kids that are doing really poorly are always going to be low on their levels of mastery. But let's think about a fairly typical kid. A kid in any grade level who gets a percentile rank of 50 or 55, that's, that's pretty legitimate. We feel pretty good about that. This kid is, is doing, you know, on, on average or a little bit better. But we might find in today's uh, dialogue or in today's environment that a student that has a percentile rank of 50 or 55 is not doing well when we look at them through the lens of mastery, may not be passing the state test. How can that be? Well, that simply exists because levels of expectation have risen and we're still working to catch up in terms of student performance. So when we compare the norm reference score to the criterion reference score, maybe right in the center they don't line up just as well. So what's the message to all of us looking at all these different types of scores from assessment? Basically the message is this, understand the score that you're looking at. Understand how it is calculated and what, is what it is designed to do and understand the reality, the true reality of it is, often scores won't line up quite as precisely as we hope that they would. That doesn't mean that there's anything fundamentally wrong with the assessment that you're using or the process that you're going through. It simply means that different scores are calculated in different ways and mean different things.